with our session or just, just a few more logistical things I would like to share with you. Um, one is about the, the duties, the dishwashing, etc. Um, we changed it a bit because actually there were too many people and the people in the kitchen got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did is we cut the groups in half and now the first half of the group will do breakfast and lunch, the second half will do dinner. So not much work left, it gets less and less and less. <laughs> <laughs> but in the in the dining room on the on one of the walls, the doors has a list. List with all the groups. So every day and there you can see if you're in group one or group two. So you should be breakfast and lunch or dinner. If you're in doubt, do both. <laughs> don't think. Uh, I don't know, so I do nothing. Don't know. Do it um, After this session, so uh, we'll end at four thirty. Yeah. We all go to the dining room again, or the whatever you want to call it, the Dutchies Cuisine. There will be coffee and tea. And I will hand out your keys of your rooms so you can find check in your rooms, the people who don't have a room yet. Um, also, yeah, that should be clear, I guess. And the last thing is that uh, in the room here, as was said before, there are all David's, a lot of books of David's new ones, the really new ones as well. Uh, there are CDs of Hannah. Which you by now no, you haven't seen them yet. Which you will have seen them yet. Also very beautiful. And there's a table with some more general books, second hand books also. And there are uh, make magazines for the people of you who don't know MIC. That's an organization in the Netherlands that initially like uh, um, organized David's coming to the Netherlands. Um, the management of the MIG is even under the participants. That's Hans Alpert. If you want to have information about it, he is now he's now undercover. And then is over there as well. So if you have questions about the MIG, it's an, an organization that promotes Course in Miracles in the Netherlands and knows where all the teachers are and where all the events and there's a monthly event where every month another teacher will come and speak uh, which will actually be immediately after this retreat on Sunday the 3rd there will be another gathering in Amersfoort with uh, uh, Diederik Wolzak this is the last, not the latest, but the one before last magazine so there's a few magazines each year. They are there on the table and you can take one for free just to look at it. It's in Dutch, I'm sorry, so not for maybe for everyone. There's a very nice article or a piece of David is in it. It's translated in Dutch, so that might be, might be nice to look at to read. Okay. You didn't even know that, did you? I, I secretly translated something <laughs> into Dutch and had it put in this magazine. Is this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, there's one thing about the microphone. Maybe if there are uh, if there are questions later, I'm going to pass this microphone. Uh, so can you pass it through? If you don't use it anymore, could you please press this button? And then the green light goes off, and we save battery. And then if you want to use it, you press it a little bit longer, then it's on again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Binary. On and off. <laughs> we're, we're, we're keeping it simple. Okay. Well, this is the part on day one where we will be opening up to you and inviting to you to share what's on your heart. It's like a prayer to the Holy Spirit. It's a prayer to the universe. It brings it up into awareness and we already had that with one right before we closed this morning of, of a prayer really of what, a movie uh, dealing with uh, jealousy. And that was beautiful. 
That's what we want you to do is, is bring it up to the surface. And it helps us too in selecting movies and shaping the way the whole retreat will go. So this is how you tailor the retreat to what would be most helpful for you. And you keep it practical. So it's not like you just coming and passively listening, but you actively offering up your prayer of what would be helpful for you. And then we have so many different tools and we've used so many different exercises over the years and many, many seeming modalities to really address the core of what is going on in the mind. And really the Holy Spirit is in charge and that's the best kind of retreat is when you can just let it come from the Spirit to you. So, and also, maybe one of you or a couple of you may want to talk about just how important this is and your experiences with, with tailoring it. <laughs> well, it's just important to, or really helpful to share openly exactly what the issues are. It's because when we keep them hidden, we, we hide them only to ourselves. We think that there are other people out there and it's scary maybe to share, but it's really we keep ourselves from hearing when we keep it to ourselves. So it's just um, yeah, really helpful to open up and just say it. Also because nobody else is judging it the way you think they might do. It's just your own projection that would make any judgment. So it's very safe. Also, we always encourage everyone to only deal with their own minds and you know, not pick someone else or think it's another pe person's problem. It's like whatever, is, whatever we hear and see and perceive is for us to heal. So that's how it's also very, very safe and all thoughts are shared, so, yeah. Yeah, I think um, what we really want to do, like I said, to open up on this pathway is I actually want to start to really fine tune to how I feel and what is the desire of my heart every moment. So I feel this is the opening of the retreat, but it's also the opening of a way of start to listen to the heart and start to listen to the prayer. So this is a chance for everyone to go around one by one, not necessarily talk about who you are from the past, but really like what is coming up as a, as a prayer to the spirit right now, as a prayer. I remember I had this one encounter with my mother years away, years back, and she was very angry at me. She was saying, you are so far away, you left me, you, 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 and was very angry, and I didn't know what to say, and I just, in that moment, I said, what if you are talking to the spirit right now? What do you want to say right now instead? And that just made her pause, and she's like, I want, it changed from how everything is wrong to, okay, this is the desire. This is the desire. This is my heart. You know, so this is very, very helpful. And we want to give everybody the opportunity at the beginning to, to get in touch and set a prayer for the rest of the time here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna try to make a circle? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I we would... say something first before we do that? Because um, it was so beautiful on the way here. Jenny, she was mentioning um, this parable about a, a pilot that we met in Australia. And we had this retreat where we were sitting, we were a lot of people, and we were sitting in a circle. And that was like almost as many people as here or the same kind of amount. So we just had this big circle going so that everyone can see each other. 
And even though you're in such a big group, so to speak, don't let yourself hold you back from even deeper things that you feel like you might not even have shared with anyone else, maybe not even your course group, because that's what happened in that example of what Jenny, she brought up this parable of this um, great healing that was going on at that retreat. And he, it was this participant coming in, you know, just some days later came to the retreat in such a group, you know, like this. And even though it was that big, he actually put out his heart. He was saying something that, you know, he had not even told his course group. And he felt so comfortable within this big group that he could even do it within the context of everyone. Because he was like, I don't know if I'm going to say it, I don't know if I'm going to say it. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, say it, say it, say it. You know, and everyone was like just supporting him. So that's what I kept on feeling. If we could just try it out, it might not work, I don't know. But I just really want to see if we could all see each other, you know, so that everyone can just connect in another way than, you know, looking at your backs. <laughs> So, um, or just like twisting and turning around on the chair and such. So if we could all just try that with, just all get up and put your chair to the side of the room.
We only have three more to, to squeeze in. So if we make a circle, circle out here, yeah. out here, and we go in the middle, you guys go in the middle, then we can fit. <laughs> but then we, it's better we see everybody. So it's yeah. better if we, yeah. we make a row there in the middle with a few chairs. Maybe yeah. this, this in the front. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, those can go. <laughs> you don't mind? We don't mind. Yes. Yeah. 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 For those who would like to. So you might, yeah, some of you. It's helpful to go in the middle of the place. Yes, he said yes. Yes, of course. If you say so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure.
come here and um, yeah, I just want to see what happens. I yeah, just gonna be open and yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marion. I'm from Holland, from Amsterdam. Um, I guess what I would like to look at is to relax now. Because <laughs> I really need it. I feel like um, I've been studying the course for like 15 years, maybe. And uh, I'm, I'm feeling more and more expansion. But my uh, theme, if you can call it like that now, is to, to relax in there, to let it ground. Because it is there. So it sounds maybe like a contradiction. There's an enormous feeling of expansion, but there's some anxiety underneath it. So I would like to maybe mirror with someone or just grounding that. Yeah, thank you. My name is Ruth, and I needed inner guidance for my uh, question, this thing is, uh, what is human condition, no nonsense level, and I know it is body, but when I have to go to the toilet, I go, but when there is something with my clothes, it isn't body, so the I want more clarity about the human condition and all is mind. And yeah, I heard you that you uh, had a talk in Ireland about your underpants who is still here. <laughs> that's human condition. And you say it's mind. So that's, I want to explore. Hello, uh, my name is Benjamin. And yeah, I'm a finance student for like two and a half years, three years of the course, and I still struggle with a lot of resistance and defensive. And really, um, my my topic would be like uh, rejection or turning away from love. It's like been a problem for my whole life, really. And I really need to open up more, and thanks for this opportunity. I think I also have a slight authority problem <laughs> with you <laughs> uh, and also with uh, spirit, maybe this also reflects in, in my job and my relationships too. I'd like to get to see what's done in this. Good afternoon, my name is Francois. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. In the I have to thank that to my wife, Alison, who is next to me. Yeah. Um, what, what I'm looking for is, uh, I would say, inner, inner peace. And what I see, I'm, I'm working in a company which is uh, doing economically not too well. So there's a lot of struggle and, and fights, and at least that's how I perceive it. Um, you have to, to fight to, 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 to keep your job, to to, um, to survive, I would say, and then at the end you, you don't trust people anymore. Uh, they might come up with proposals and you, you start to question everything. You see everywhere something bad in what is being proposed. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not. But uh, at the end of the day, you, know, you don't have any, <clears throat> any inner peace and you keep on looking for what is the right thing, and it's not right this, I can feel it's not right, but what's wrong? So, I hope to find some uh, answers to those questions. Mm, Hi, I'm Alison. Um, I would say my problem here is uh, lack of self-esteem, feelings of unworthiness, and to be honest, speaking like this in front of a group of people actually scares me to death. So perhaps, I don't know, overcoming those issues would be uh, really helpful for me this, this week. Uh, and Els from Holland. I'm studying the course for eight years now. Uh, this scares me to death. <laughs> and every 
I feel that God where I got the food for me, but every morning I have to uh, reset myself. It, uh, it, it disappears, the, the, the feeling of that uh, is all right. And I reset myself and then during the morning it's, uh, it's okay again. And not, uh, not many this week has helped. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ernest, I'm from The Hague. Yesterday I did not know that I would be here today, no. Oh. <laughs> so, my alarm went off about a quarter to seven, and a few moments later I was back in. Um, I didn't know why, but yeah, I knew, but I did not decide to really like, oh yeah, I need to go there. I packed my bags and could make some agenda, changes, etc. in time. So, um, well, what is keeping me in my mind busy is the question, what is wisdom after all? What is that? Is that for everybody? Is it a seldom thing? Can I get that? How? Where? Possibly here. So, that is my issue for today. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. I am, uh, when I think, when I must say my name, I you say, I'm the son of God, of course. <laughs> but they call me Tekla. Uh, I'm very grateful to meet you here, and I'm so grateful you're one light of the world, and bless you. But um, my question, um, I know the experience to be one with God is so wonderful, but I also know a constant experience of fear in my life. <laughs> That's what happens when you say you're the son of God. You have dominion over the world. You can move, like Lucy, the movie Lucy, move the people. <laughs> Besides experience to be one with God, I've always and constantly fear uh, about death and illness. And I know it's only a body, and I know it's not real. And I know I come to uh, a blameless consciousness by forgiveness and forgiveness over and over again. And still, I always feel <coughs> a sense of fear about it. Because maybe you have a beautiful movie for me. <laughs> so that I uh, can lose this forever. <laughs> and, and I can be concerned. That's my wish. Thank you. Great. Yes. Hello, my name is Christian. I, I come from Germany. And I uh, worked in the course for like two years. I studied for many, many years Zen Buddhism. For I came to the cross um, to because I had a feeling of lack that my heart was really involved in touch with my life and um, to open it really. And um, the cause was um, yes, it, it reached me. It reached me for the first time and I read it. And um, I want to learn trust, really trust in this in this uh, mighty God who helps me in his hands and, and it always gets lost and sometimes I feel I, I try to use uh, spiritual ways to, to make my own thing, <laughs> uh, to use it and to be whatever, but not really to surrender and to get in, really in touch with that. And that's what I am here. Hello, my name is Rosalia. Uh, well, for me it's about the question, um, the fear of love, because I see a blockage, and well, only my wish to open more. That's it. Hello, I'm uh, Lee, uh, I'm uh, from Amsterdam. I'm studying 
because she's married to her for up years. Um, uh, I have uh, difficulties to uh, speak up for myself, to uh, explain in words what's going on. Um, well, I guess I know, I'm, su I'm sure it's about fear. Um, yeah. What can I say more? <laughs> That's an issue. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, jealousy. I'm a little bit jealous about um, all those people who are speaking up uh, very easily. Seems to me. <laughs> well, that's it for now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Helen, and I'm living in Amsterdam. And I'm studying in the class, I think, for 15 years now. And I would like to trust more, trust in God. Just, you know, I, sometimes I give things to the Holy Spirit, but then find myself picking it up again and working it out. So it happens often. So I really want to come there, just like you know. I watch your videos and telling about the stars and thinking. I'm not there. I would like to have that. And besides, also right now in my life, it is like um, I'm being drawn so much to God. And um, because of that, I don't only do the course, I do all kinds of things which has to do with awakening, different path. And um, just because I, I can't sit still on my own at home, there is not an opportunity in Amsterdam to do the course every day. So um, now, over two weeks, I'm going to Muji. I don't know if you know Muji. I know it's different, but I just, I can look past all those forms. I don't look at things which are different, but I just look things with God and I look on that. But I'm really missing that now. I want it every day and I find myself drawn to it. And, but now, just today, I heard somebody talking on the place, he said, in Mexico there is something, because I have the opportunity, I'm retired already. And uh, he said, oh, there is something in Mexico. I said, wow, maybe I can go in there. And, but then I could feel the fear. So when the rubber hits the road, you, you know, then I thought, I really want that. Okay. You see, so I really want a clarity with that and the trust. Maybe if I trust more, that could then become a little bit easier. That's because fear is not up, then also as fear is also up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm uh, Adrian. You can call me Adrian. Uh, I'm from France, and I'm So on YouTube, uh, it's a lot of time, uh, and you all, and uh, to to hear all the all the uh, yeah the, the miracles you you have experienced, and uh, yeah, just to share this joy with you, and uh, it has already started. So thank you for the one I I have the opportunity to to speak to. So, uh, so yeah, I'm very happy to be here and, uh, and to see those all these uh, smiles. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm here for an experience in oneness. Hello, I'm Maynard, and uh, I can say I'm a heavy student in the Course of Miracles. And uh, I really, really feel at home with, uh, with what I'm doing since several years now in this course. Um, really feel at home there, and the most important message for, from the course for me is that 
I'm at home already. So that's a really reassuring thing for me to experience. And I, I think I begin to deepen the experience even more um, as time passes. So I'm really happy with that. And, but um, I'm in a, in a sense of opening my heart more, feel more connectedness with all my brothers and sisters. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I'm so happy you're all here. Thank you very much. There's always, always, always uh, also <coughs> some form of disconnectedness, disconnectedness in me also, but um, I want to overcome that and uh, I want to um, lay factors with, which should hold me from really open my heart on the, on the table and uh, look at them and uh, mm -hmm. get, get, get around them. So maybe this week will uh, help me. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Kenneth, and um, I've come here to my prayer is to undo uh, my self identity that I still believe that I'm this person. So, my deep prayer is to relinquish that and to be directly shown clearly who I really am. So, that's my. Yeah, that's my deep prayer for, for these five days. Thank you. My name is Anetta. <coughs> and I'm also really, really grateful to be here. I'm from Germany. And I am I'm with, with the course quite a long time, but I stopped in between, and this was really and then I um, continue again and now uh, I came here because uh, um, last weekend I was in Vienna and there was a German speaking conference on the course and uh, people showed about the retreat and I was I'm very happy to be where yeah, I took it together so uh, uh, instantly. Mm -hmm. And that's all for now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Diana uh, and I've been a student of the course for quite some years, but I've been uh, studying completely on my own. So it's the first time I'm, I'm together with people who are have the same interests, so it's very exciting. But um, this summer was a kind of hermitage for five weeks in Norway, where I was fly fishing to, to have some food, and uh, uh, reading the course and contemplating all that thing. And during these five days, uh, five weeks, it got clearer and clearer to me that. Well, now I, I, I just want to <laughs> give me over to this and, and yeah, experience who I am. But um, I, I, I feel like uh, I, I, I don't have the practical tools at all. Uh, so I hope maybe you all can help. Hello, I'm Jos. Um, 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 I'm feeling uh, kind of scared, and uh, I'm uh, not on the right place. I'm uh, feeling that uh, 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 <laughs> uh, this. Something can go terribly wrong here with me. Um, um, so we'll see. I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Ellen. I'm uh, grateful to be here. Um, I think the biggest desire I have is to feel the oneness, the unity with everybody. But on the other hand, I feel 
feel scared about it. Uh, if I have really contact with some person, sometimes I feel I have to run away. So that's quite a, a different thing. Um, another thing what's difficult for me is to uh, how to um, to um, to go with uh, physical pain. Now I understand emotional pain. That's a lot of things in your mind. But I feel a lot of physical pain of my mother, sometimes of myself or of my brother. And um, yeah, how to um, how, to, how do you cooperate with?
Korea, but that's also uh, a freedom. My name is uh, Christian. Uh, I don't really have a topic. I'm here for the Holy Ghost for me. If I must be here. Uh, maybe I find out what my topic is. My name is Pierre, and I'm from Amsterdam. For this uh, weekend, for the week, my deepest desire is to experience the whole instant. Uh, since, since I'm about 20, I know that it's possible to do miracles by simply connecting your heart, opening up your heart, and by looking at someone from the whole instant, that's when, when you can perform miracles. I, I think I was born with this, this desire to perform miracles. So I, I have this very strong intention to do that. And in order to, to achieve that, I'm jumping on actually and working very hard on achieving this holy instant. Now I remember from the cross somewhere uh, where he says you perform miracles with this holy instance for which you do not prepare. Mm. So if you could if you could clarify a little bit about that, then I can jump into the world and <laughs> I, I would love to be a very spectacular <laughs> miracle worker. <laughs> physical pain. 
Um, and then especially if it's physical pain with um, close relatives, like my children or my father, um, then it's difficult for me to maintain grounded in um, the right view. And that's what I would like. I would like to, uh, to ground me into the right perspective and not get lost into um, the ego perspective. But for me, it was especially triggered, I trigger on physical pain with uh, close relatives. That's why it gets, because it's physical. Mm. You see? So I hope I get more clarity during this week. Thanks. My name is Jan. And actually, I'm looking for the truth for a long time already, 45 years or so. And but then samsara really hit me. And my topic actually is discernment. When afterwards it's easy, after the, the, the experience, it's not always easy, but it's easier to find out, oh, this was ego, or this was me, my other self. But in the moment, I sometimes lose it, and, well, this is, I think, about discernment. So, which voices am I hearing now? I would like to, and everybody of you can tell me something about that, it's very welcome. Yeah, that's my main thing, thank you. My name is Irene, Irene, and uh, I had a lot of resistance to come here, uh, but something drove me to come. And, uh, well, I know a lot of concepts, but my big wish is that I get in touch with them, that I, that I feel them instead of knowing. That's my big wish. Hi, I'm Luz. It feels like my prayer is said so many times. It's like, it's, it is an amazing experience at the moment. I'm so grateful. Um, continuity. I feel like um, I. I feel like um, I have a fear of being with the Holy Spirit all the time. I feel like something about that at the moment. Like I see myself looking to um, what I thought gave me safety and what has been shown that it's not true safety, and I feel like I'm. Sometimes like running around or just zoning out and just don't want to be fully present. Um, yeah, this retreat feels very <laughs> important for some reason. It feels. Yeah, I I hope I can be open for a shift that may happen in the mind. I'm Marga from Holland. I'm grateful to be here. And my desire is to feel more connected to my source. I'm uh, off. Uh, off. And 
it's only incidental. And so my deep desire is to have that, to long for longing that. That's, that's the question. Yeah. This is not a special topic. There are all topics. <laughs> <laughs> take me out. Eh? And take me out that contact. And I'm longing for it to stay in that contact. Yeah. My name is Marta or Margaret from Holland, Leiden. I want to say thank you to Chris for bringing us here together. Yeah. Such a beautiful place, such so beautiful people. Thank you. My topic is to find deeper understanding about the holy relationship. I observe with myself, the more I desire for a holy re relationship, the more special it gets. <coughs> Seemingly. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Sam. Hello, uh, David. Fine to see you back again. Thanks for coming. Um, yes, I've grown into a heavy learner, of course, by years. My first teacher was uh, a master, or who conveyed the course to me he was in Leandro in uh, 1989. And then I left, you know, in my library for a time, <laughs> knew what it was. But and then picked up again. So it last about five, six years. I was, I was, I'm delving quite, quite deeper into that, and kind of hoping to one of my, my masters, like you are too, a bit different. Uh, but that's not too soon. I'm very happy. And now and then, there comes some topics, of course. And I see it at that. Being, you know, from, from, from very practical profession, you know, I try to, to uh, not to be too theoretical or theoretical, but to see uh, very practical. I live like a dolphin. A dolphin lives in the water, mates in the water, is happy. But he has to jump out of the water, take a breath, breath, fresh air, looks above the waterline, looks above the battlefield, and jumps again. And I think that's the answer to many things, that we come permanently. Um, stay up there. We have to dive up and down. And the one day we come yeah, forever on the shore. And one of my problems is being a very happy learner and being very thankful for all the teachings is to get along with anger. You know, in Dutch, we Dutch, I was Dutch educated, coming from Asia, though, we learned a very nice Dutch curse hot dogger. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it's very funny. You don't, you don't find it in English, you don't find it in German. Uh, it's, it's a self search uh, if, if, you are, uh, if you have bad luck or if you're very stupid. And most of them are doing something very stupid, if you're very peaceful and start into the course, beautiful, like you might have office, you know. And I jam my finger in the door, whatever. I said, hold on. And I said, this is anger. The anger, which is, of course, an issue of the course. But it is <coughs> How can I get along with that? This anger. It's on one, one topic. How to, you know, to cope with that. It pops up on the very unborn uh, uh, occasions, the very uncomfortable sometimes. And the second topic is, if I may, is some kind of loneliness. Uh, indulging more and more in the course, you, you come to the other volume, volume 5. Uh, psychotherapy and being, being still in, active in, in the medical field, you know, I feel some urge, you know, to change all my mental thinking into that way of healing. And that's okay, I'm progressing, but I'm feeling very lonely because my colleagues don't understand. Uh, it's very hard to, to talk with colleagues about that. They always have the same mission. 
to heal people, even very, very dedicated doctors, friends, they say, oh, no, 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 it's too much. So that's some kind of loneliness, you know, maybe you can you know, recognize that you know, on, on your, uh, your terms, but how to cope with that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mel. I grew up in the Dutch Bible Belt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know what it is. It is uh, uh, there are, there are the people who make it uh, very uh, seriously, and they are very sure uh, that you have to work hard. And, and if that's between the course and me, that is that I have to work hard for it, otherwise I will okay. I'm very frustrated about that. That it is still here. I know it is an illusion, but still I do it. So it, is, uh, it makes a blur, it makes it black, it makes it happy. And, uh, so probably this week I will see that it is not true. <laughs> <laughs> my wish to, to, to feel this freedom, to, to really surrender um, all the time. There is a, um, a section in the course and that says, I need to do nothing. And I understand that very well, but I notice that uh, there are times that I do a lot of things. <laughs> and well, this, is, this is really my, my topic for not not only for this week, but it has been for the last, uh, the last year or so, that I noticed that I, I like to keep, yeah, to keep the ropes in hand, like they say in Holland, and mm -hmm. uh, in Honda House, and difficult to let go. Hello, I'm Bastian. Um, I came to the course in a way by accident. I awakened by accident. <laughs> I was uh, super depressed and suicidal, and at one point I didn't believe the suffering anymore. And then I had a union with Christ, wow. which was the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me in my life. And then but then I had like uh, what people call a Kundalini crisis. Like I had a Kundalini awakening, or some energy awakening, completely melted to divine union. But then my body was shaking for one year, and everything dissolved into vibration, and you know, also vibration, and everything went upside down. And, <coughs> and I was still very in addictions. I was very, still very screwed up. 
but that's the way I, I went to the course because I, I was looking for what, what, what has happened there, and at some point I end up at the course mergers and it explains very well a lot. So um, now, right now, I'm at a point that I got a lot of physical, I got a lot of physical pain, back pain, <coughs> and uh, some mental problems, I would say. And my biggest wish and my deepest prayer is um, there's a thing in the Course that says stop being sick and withhold uh, uh, salvation to the world or something. And um, because sometimes, yeah, the Course says uh, uh, you are healed and your touch heals people. And I've experienced that, that I touch people and then. They had lushes of light flowing through their body, and it was like this grace that I have experienced was passed on to others, and it was so beautiful to share, and not like like when this grace floods everyone, and it's and it's shared with everyone, and it's such a unified goal and beauty, and and I would be so happy to. Um, to give up my suffering and share salvation. And going there, I, I face this fear of death. Uh, it's like, like the past couple of months, whenever I go into meditation, it's like I, either there, there come up old experiences of death or something, it's like we living death experiences or, or uh, dying from sickness. I got a lot of experience dying from sickness. And, it's always, always death comes up, and I'm very much afraid of, yeah. And I have a lot of, res I have resistance coming here because I feel like I have to die. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hello, I'm uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
everything. I, I knew who I really was. And after 14 years, um, something happened in my life. And the story is that I was betrayed. I let myself completely fall down. And this is, after that, I blamed myself and I didn't feel worthy of God anymore. I couldn't feel my own worthiness anymore. And um, just recently, I started again with the Course in Miracles. Now it's as if I am walking the path, but from the other way, as if I started out and I was already there. Everything was already there. I, I, I had a, an experience. I really experienced, I was everything. And I had a lot of these experiences, even before I started with the Course in Miracles. I didn't know what it was. I, was, I did you know nothing about spirituality. And only after that, I began to read and do inner work. And now it is as if I'm further away from that divine experience than ever. It's as if I have to start all over again. And, and it's uh, quite hard not to blame myself for that and think that I'm very, I must have done something wrong. Right? Um, I feel as if I'm um, confused. Um, and then I found a passage in the Course in Miracles, and it's just talking about that. Um, that everything is turned around, and that we're going backwards. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's quite cool. Mm -hmm. And I was happy to read it because I, and now I feel going up and down. Sometimes I'm in so much bliss, I can I walk with my dog, and, and I. I let myself fall on the ground and I feel the connection to the earth and to everything and I, I'm laughing and crying out loud and then uh, after a few days my husband comes and I'm so angry, I'm so impatient, I'm so frustrated and I, it's as if all the anger I thought I had left behind me is coming up. And it's worse than ever. So I really want to, um, I really hope I am able to transform the anger and the impatience. It's, it's, as, it's as if a, there's a dark spot. And if there's a white wall and you look at the dark spot, all you can look at is the dark spot. You don't see the light wall, and that is how I feel often. such a deep sadness in my stomach, in my belly. And uh, I remember I had it before. And sometimes when I had it, uh, I would, for instance, read the course or so, and it would get me out of it. But sometimes it can remain such a long time. It's just a kind of, you know, very strange feeling, a feeling of, of uh, uh, being in love, but it is not love, it is, it is a horrible feeling, you know, and uh, I think we call it the fingers, um, <laughs> butterflies, <laughs> I think they're butterflies, but they're, they're not real, 
they are uh, dark. And um, then a few days ago it started again and I thought, well, I just stay with it. And I want to experience it. I just want to know what is it. Uh, instead of getting out of it again. And, um, but I don't know. I only feel a very deep sadness. And I, I think it is a sadness of of separation, that's all I can think of, but I believe I should learn to, I don't know if it's to learn, but to accept that there is also darkness in me, and there's also this, this sadness in me, and uh, that's why I wanted to stay with it. That didn't make me happy, of course. Um, I don't know what to do with it, yeah. I think I should um, learn to be in peace with everything which, which comes to me. So even such a feeling, I should learn to accept it and should stay with it and not just uh, fly away from it by doing things as if I am in the light or something, because it is there, I believe. But maybe I'm on the wrong path in this way, I don't know. Because then I get also all kinds of feelings or ideas and thoughts of, uh, of uh, I should separate from my husband and I should go another way. And you know, it puts me also as if there should be a turn in my life. It should be a, a different way or so. I don't know, it is an open question for me, this feeling. Ik ben Agnes en ik kom voor die as, more love, more peace and happiness and the Holy Spirit to us to help for everything. Thank you. My name is Ingrid. Um, I recognized a lot of, the, of your story to uh, have the need to be special, at least for some people, and the most important. And and uh, and that in the meantime, I feel the really the the wish to feel who I really am and to not be uh, depend on other people to be worthy or to be to. To exist, <laughs> yeah, and um, so my deep wish is to experience who I really am. Yeah, I'm Chris. Um, my like my spiritual path. I think it started. The first thing I can remember is the deep wish to, to go home. Um, I'm not been studying the course, I don't know how long it doesn't matter, but and at a certain point came the realization like that's not true, because if I would really 100% wish to be home, I would be home. And of course, yet yeah, that you are home, but, but I experienced something else. So it's for me about finding out like, what, what am I doing? Why do I choose? Obviously, I choose a different experience. And what's been my, my, my red line through all my life is not being good enough. So my dad was really my, my mirror. He showed me very clearly that I wasn't good enough. But of course, it's what I believe about myself. And I came everywhere, every job, everything, every situation I came into was, again, this mirror. You're not good enough, so. And that's, of course, the same as, as feeling unworthy of love. I, I believe there are some people, the happy people, those mysterious people that exist in this world that are really happy and successful and everything, but I'm not part of it, and I don't know how to how to become like them, because I'm like a lesser kind of person who's... So 
So I guess it's really this, also this guilt that the chorus talks about, that it's hidden so far away, so deep. The guilt for the separation. But it's like a concept to me, it's like, okay. There's a lot of things the chorus talks about that I've really experienced and seen through with this, this guilt. So what am I guilty of? I guess it must be there, otherwise, if, if, if I wouldn't still invest in that, believe in that, I guess I would not be here. I would be in heaven. So, um, my, my wish would be to stop. <laughs> Just stop doing that, you know, stop believing I'm not, I'm not good enough. With all the respect, but I really, what I really feel is I have no patience to listen. I try to listen, and it's not personal, but I, I really burst out. I, I really hope this is the worst pass of this <laughs> <laughs> And 
Then I always I told you this morning, since many, many years, I long so much to live in, in God's providence. And I've read several books about people like Cody Ten Boom. Maybe some of you know know her name. She has lived in a in a Christian perspective, but nevertheless she was led of course by the Holy Spirit. And she was guided through all, and I could feel this longing when I was reading her words so deeply, so deeply. I thought, yeah, this is what I want. I don't care. I don't. I want this. And then after I, I started course again, I found David, and and he he's living the way he, he, I want that. <laughs> But the course is helping me a lot. And when I'm with the right people, I'm, I feel at home. So that's a very nice experience for me. So, and when I heard from Chris that I was inside this course, there was really a wave of joy coming into my body and in my mind. So I know I'm on the right spot now. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Sylvia. Um, what I learned in my life is be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that I'm afraid to wish. Um, course came in my life three and a half years ago. It took me three years to do all the lessons because there was so much resistance. But still the first moment I looked into the book, I realized <laughs> this is the answer. This, you know, but there's so much resistance in me. But I'm uh, so scared to look at my fear. Um, that's my, my prayer, to have courage to, to look fear in the eye, is that how you say it? And to bring it to the light. Because now, um, yeah, my compulsive, addictive behavior comes up and I'm just too afraid to look it in the eye. And I want to surrender to to really, really do the course and not just, I mean, I'm, I'm in a lot of groups and I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I work hard. <laughs> but that's not it. I want to live it. But I'm scared. And there are moments in a day that, or in a week, that I think, oh my God, yeah, this is it. And, and then the moment I think it, I'm going to eat, 
or I'm going to whatever, but as long as I'm not doing this. the Holy Spirit, but somehow I think I take the wrong way or so, you know? I ask the Holy Spirit and my ego answers something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, wanna, I, wanna, I really want to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit, to really listen and to live it, to, to act on his, yeah, what he says. My name is Miranda, Miranda. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of topics, they all come by, every issue. Um, I hesitated about going to this retreat about four weeks ago because I thought I wasn't worth it. So much money spending. Um, but I, I did it. I'm here. But the ego wasn't satisfied. It brought up a lot of topics we talked about, Helena, Jenny, this morning that I wasn't allowed to be here because of several things. And the, the only thing I wanted when I heard about this retreat was being in the presence of people not judging me for my thinking, my behavior, for my being. Um, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of people pleasing. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I do. And Simon Garfunkel's song keeps going through, through my head. I'm so tired of keeping my customers satisfied. Mm -hmm. That's my ego thing, you know, my customers, and I, I really am tired. And I'm so longing for giving and receiving love that I'm worth it. That Love is for me, for everyone, and we, we can share the, the oneness. So I was so looking forward to being here with, with all of you. And it's so funny, because there's also thinking in my head, there's no, no place for me. Well, not in a circle, but obviously in the middle. <laughs> Giving and receiving, that's, that's my desire. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ina Borg. Um, I'm a student a couple of months now, almost a year, I think. Um, I also recognize a lot of topics I have and have, and I don't know. Uh, one is unworthiness. And, and loneliness, a deep, deep, deep sense of loneliness. And popping up uh, every time. And also, what's new for me the last uh, few months is a kind of, uh, and now I feel it's more um, stronger. More strong. strong. That there's popping up as a kind of uh, proud of myself instead of unworthiness, because in the place where unworthiness always was, there there is uh, a couple of months of a kind of softness and, and, and loving uh, love, and sometimes unworthiness is popping up. But still, there is the softness and, 
and, and the love. And the unworthiness now is popping up in the love. There's no separation. So uh, it feels kind of a little bit more, yeah, a little bit proud of what I've reached. And there is one big theme for me, and that's always for years, and that's sex. <laughs> and sex with uh, my husband, a uh, man, and, and sex, my female sexuality. And um, uh, a year ago, I, I, I suddenly it, it came to me, I was frozen, I, uh, with in, in between sex, everything was possible for, for years. Uh, I was like a, a goddess, the, the men said. And, but there was the feeling of the, I felt the, the, the separateness of being, no, the, the longing, I, I know the longing of, of coming home. And then it was for me this, I felt a kind of se separateness with, with love. Love in, in sexuality and love in, 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 I thought I am an actress, I am, I am, I am doing this from, from fear and, and to get something and, and, and every, and, 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 and then suddenly I stopped. <laughs> with, I go home and I say to my husband, well, it's done. I am finished, no sex. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> and, the last year is it's finding out to stay with the softness and, and and the love and and connect it with my husband and uh, yeah don't lose the feeling stay in the feeling and only want to, to connect connect like this and then. My husband really, really <laughs> wanted to leave me because uh, uh, sex for me was how it's supposed to be. But I, I stayed in the in, in the trust, like um, but it feels you know it feels so right. The softness and the love and and, and yes I wanted him to stay, but if he won't stay then okay, don't stay. But this this is how, and, and, and I hear all the people talking, and I feel a kind of proud that, yeah, I really trust this, the feeling here, and, and I, I want to deepen it, and ah, deepen it, and always, yeah, do it with this kind of feeling, the softness and, and the love, everything I do, everything, with everybody, but the sex is, yeah, it's, it's an adventure for me. It's an adventure. And I like the open, I like the openness to dive in there too. And then to explore. And to explore. And at the same time, my husband is gay. But I want to explore. Always think I have to do it. <laughs> 
which shows a, a very young Jesus, but still with miracles going on around him, and his parents and uh, others starting to be astonished early on. And, and yet, if you think of it, that even with a young Jesus, he had this inkling, this feeling inside, like all of us have had, that there was some kind of a destiny for his life that was beyond what his parents or the world could say. We all have that something stirring in us right now that's going, mm -hmm. We're feeling the same thing that the younger Jesus was feeling. He didn't know what form uh, it would play out. He didn't have any idea it would play out, you know, 30 some years and all those scenes that were recorded in the Bible and all the miracles. He didn't. He couldn't see any of that, but he could feel what we're feeling now, what you're feeling. I just came from England and there was a woman there who said, word for word, the same words that you said, Ronnie was there. She said, I want that. She just, I want, you know, it was very clearly like a statement. It was a declaration of, and, and I'll do whatever it takes for that. It was a very strong declaration. And I think, we could say that, that Jesus, as he moved along through his earth life, he, he had this very strong sense of destiny, but he couldn't, he couldn't really talk much about it. And we can't, we haven't been able to talk much about that part. You know, we, we're just here, some of us just beginning to expose and express our fears and doubts, our, our worthiness issues, our struggles. Or the idea that it's going to be work, it's going to take so much hard work. We're just getting to the point where we're starting to put on the table everything we believe is blocking us from our destiny. This vast destiny that Jesus is calling us to. And I have to say, for all of us here too, if you went back to our childhoods, um, or even to, uh, yeah, our, our teen years, or even maybe our year when we were in our 20s, uh, none of us could have predicted in the faintest way the ways that our lives are, have been playing out. Or, for example, over this last decade, or for me, for even for these last, um, two and a half decades, I would never in a million years have been able to predict what has, has gone on. And I think that's important for all of us to know, that, that we have to let go of our thoughts of the future. How our lives will look, how the form is going to go. Uh, you were saying you're, so, you're getting happier and happier, you don't, you know, you're not paying as much attention to, to the form of it. We all have to be willing to go in that direction. Because if we're going to give our mind under the control of Jesus, if we're going to give Holy Spirit the, the invitation, you know, okay, here it is, I give you everything. It's yours now. I am here to serve a greater plan. I am here to be used. I want to be used for the greater good of the whole. I want to be used for the good of everyone. When we honestly make that prayer, then we, we are literally letting go of the future. And there's even a work book lesson, I place the future in the hands of God. That that's how we let go of the past. We need to let go of the past, but we also need to let go of the future, because the future is just a projection of the past. It's just the ego telling us what could come in the future. And it's also how the ego defends against the holy instant. It always is trying to say, look what happened, and it could get worse. <coughs> Whether it's sickness, pain, suffering, it will project that, that into the future. And it will get your mind gyrating in busyness to guard against those future 
consequences. We have to be honest that we've been tricked in the past, we've been bamboozled, we've had the wool pulled over our eyes, where we got so worried and concerned about the future, that we invested in doing meaningless things to protect against future consequences that had not even arrived yet. And the Course is telling us they aren't even there. You're acting and reacting and putting a lot of energy into something that's not even there. It's just an imagined future. And some of us study like psychology, for example, and we learned from psychology about defense mechanisms. We learned about repression and suppression. We learned about denial. We learned about sublimation, substitution. We learned about a lot of defense mechanisms and then we get Jesus Christ and He comes and He says, the past is gone. The future is but imagined. These concerns are but defenses against present change of focus. We didn't learn that from Freud. The past is a defense. We didn't learn that from mom and dad. The future is a defense. A defense mechanism. How many of us were taught to be ambitious? To plan for the future. We weren't told that was, we were defending against the holy instant. You see, that's why we need the way shower. That's exactly why we need the master. We need someone who's transcended time and space to instruct us. Our parents were just put there by the ego. And so were our neighbors. And so was everybody else. Jesus says, the ego peopled the world. Ooh. We never heard that. We heard Adam and Eve, we heard a weird story of birth and conception, but nobody told us that the ego peopled the world. The ego put all the bodies out there, all the stars and the planets, everything of time and space is a projection from the ego made for one reason, to keep you asleep and guilty and full of amnesia. That's why this cosmos is like, everybody says, well, the world's not all so bad. Oh, Jesus tells us something in the Course. He says in the workbook, the world was made an, as an attack on God, a place where God can enter not. Hmm. <laughs> Haven't even heard those words from Advaita Vedanta or the great non-dualistic teachings on the that have been on the planet for many centuries. Jesus really wants us to escape and be free. He's going to tell us, oh, the ego did it. It's all still a metaphor because remember, separation never happened. We can't lose track of that. It's the atonement. But he's telling us that for one reason, because he's saying you have to put your focus and your attention in another direction in order to escape. You have to allow yourself, your mind to be used as a miracle worker. So that you can get happier and happier and happier. Because the world is not escaped through death. The world is escaped through miracles and happiness. He tells us we have to experience the happy dream before the dream disappears. You don't escape from nightmares with pain and suffering and hurt. You escape from nightmares with happy dreams. Where the world becomes so clear and so happy and so unified that you can barely keep your feet on the earth. You feel you want to fly like Superman. <laughs> Remember Barbara Streisand's song, <laughs> Superman, you ever hear that one? Baby, I can fly like a bird. It's a beautiful song, if you've never heard Barbara Streisand sing Superman, you have to go home tonight and get on your iTunes and download Superman from Barbara Streisand. When you touch me with your eyes, Ah, uh, that's my, 
If I am not a bird, and I am not a plane, I'm Superman. <laughs> when you love me, it's easy. I can do most anything. Watch me turn around, one wing up and one wing down. I never thought I could fall in love for good. I'm Superman. <laughs> You hear Streisand and Superman, and you go, ooh, that's, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> I think I'd like to fly. <laughs> She'll get you in the mood for flying. But that would be a happy dream, right? If you could fly like a bird. We'll say like a hummingbird. You could really control where you fly. You know, ever watch the hummingbirds? Aren't they fun to watch? They can just, they just hover, they can go fast, they can go slow. I like to film them in slow motion, you know, they're like, they're really having a good time. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a symbol of what you want to do instead of being like stuck on Earth, like a earthbound. That's just a symbol. When we have flying dreams, we like it. Because we feel more free. You got something? No, I was distracted to Sorry. Is it time? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. That's it. <laughs> that's the end of the song for today. <laughs> but, but that's really why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. We're doing it because we're being called as, as miracle workers, as spectacular miracle workers. And there's a lot there for us to help us. And so we're going to talk about that in this retreat. And now, that's all. No, no, it's at the right moment, I, I, just because of what you're saying, it sounds fantastic. But then, when you put that in the daily life, for example, everybody takes out insurances, mm -hmm. which is planning for the future, yeah. because something might happen. Or, in the business world, I mean, you're making big budgets, business plans, three years, mm -hmm. five years. I mean, the, the whole time you are planning and, and, and so on which is completely contradictory with what you're saying, actually, and what we've learned from our parents. So, how do we put that all together? <laughs> yes, well that's what, I, that's what I'm going to talk about this week, because I, I've had a few lunches with Judy Sketch. Judy is the publisher of A Course in Miracles, and she's 88 years old. And her and her husband have been working on publishing, translating the course for decades, and she says with her white hair and her beautiful smile and her sparkly eyes that, that they never have had a business plan. Their business plan is praying and listening to the Holy Spirit. And she says it with a twinkle in her eye as she's talking about it, and I, I said, me too. <laughs> yeah, I could totally relate, but that's good. I want you to bring up those questions, because what we will talk about will seem to invert a lot of our programming and conditioning. It's going to go the opposite of what we have believed. And Jesus says this world is backwards and upside down. And so when he tells us the world is backwards and upside down, we should be ready to hear what's, what he's got to say. Because we need to know a new way. The old way is not working. The world certainly shows that, as they can say, fighting in companies, layoffs, you know, it's, it's a breaking down. Okay, so it's time, soon you will get your keys from Chris, and then you can start to settle in, and we will come back for a spectacular movie tonight at 7.30. <laughs>